My 14-year-old cousin applied to me as a surprise for MasterChef because she didn't want me to leave Eretz Yisrael and move back to England. So in the end, I ended up doing MasterChef and everything has changed. So it's all because of my 14-year-old cousin, Galit. So thanks, Galit. Love you. I knew the statistics of MasterChef, um, that it was the most watched show in Israel, that over 50% of people in Israel watch MasterChef, which is a crazy statistic when you think about it. That would be the equivalent of 30 million people regularly every week watching one show in England, which doesn't happen. Even EastEnders isn't that big. <laughs> About 10,000 people applied and I came 11th in the country. In fact, one time I said a blessing over some of the food on the program and the judges stopped and literally for over two minutes they were talking about how nice it is to stop and appreciate what you've got and realize where it comes from. And little things like that can make a very, very big impact on the Jewish community and on the world as a whole, please God. Anyone who's seen Josh or heard about him, even if we haven't seen him, we've all, you know, um, on actual TV, we've all seen him in the press, um, you know, read about him and his engagement. And, you know, everyone's really excited. It's someone, you know, who's religious, um, who's making waves in Israel and, you know, making religious cool. Um, you know, so it's been really, really nice to have, you know, Josh, who has, you know, become a name now, um, cook for us at Mayor Panim. It's been great. And why was I, I was voted out? Because I did it a little bit different. I used all different kinds of meat. So I had like a mixed grill shawarma so that whenever you took a bite, you had different textures, different meats. Every meat I had marinated in a different spice. And then I used different kinds of sides in it. And then I deconstructed it so that one of the things that people love about shawarma is you get all the different things in. With every bite, you get everything that you wanted. But sometimes it's nice to have one bite of shawarma meat with this flavoring and one bite of shawarma meat with that flavoring and combine it and mix it and have a little bit of fun with it. So I decided to cut my pizzas into strips and make them a little bit harder so that people could, people could use it kind of like a, not really a pate, but you get what I mean, you know, like a cracker, like a, sh you know, so everything has something different. I made an onion and chili jam to eat with it and it was, and they said to me it was delicious. And since the show's finished, I've been offered my own restaurant by a few people. I've been offered working in kitchens with some of the top chefs in the country. Um, you know, there's talks possibly doing my own television show and newspaper article and cookbook and different things like that. And it's all very, very exciting. We've been looking forward to this as soon as uh, we knew Josh was going to be here. We, uh, we kind of leaped at the opportunity. Uh, food is a real passion of mine. I trained as a chef back in New York, so uh, so once we knew Josh was going to be around, we uh, we made sure he was going to be here. There's a Monte Cristo sandwich. It's a very famous sandwich for us foodies. It's basically a sandwich of chicken and pears with melted cheese. Um, and I tried to figure out how could I take that and make that into a chumantashen and then serve it to everybody. Um, so now you're starting to understand why they called me the Michigana on the show, why they said that I am the craziest contestant. This is the first time I've been able to see him and witness him doing cooking in front of an audience. Because of it being in Israel, I haven't been able to be a part of his journey. So for me today, I'm exceptionally proud and uh, schlepping nachos today. The chicken cooking with some thyme, garlic, margarine instead of butter and olive oil. And then in here is the pears poaching very, very slowly. Um, which we're trying to get the water to boil and then we'll reduce it to simmer and that's with um, port because Purim, on Purim we drink wine, no? So we wanted to do recipes with wine involved in it. Um, so there's port wine, there's star anise, cinnamon, honey and orange juice and that will be simmering and then later we'll use that poaching liquid 
to make a sauce. That His first dinner party for us when he was about eight and he made a six course meal which was uh, very adventurous for somebody so young. Once I decided this is what I wanted to do I got a call actually from Gabby asking me whether I would do a cooking demonstration in England for his charity, the Meripanim. And I ended up actually cooking for a soup kitchen for um, 200 meals. The charity has a, a network of soup kitchens, after school clubs. We also provide a food card for Holocaust survivors just before uh, the high holidays and also thousands of people so that they can go and buy the food they need. It's a fantastic evening. It's great to be able to share with London Jewry um, some exciting news of Israel, some exciting food ideas and the wonderful stuff that Meripanim are doing nowadays. So when you have Indian food, you take a bite and you have these like beautiful flavours and as you chew and swallow, the heat in the food starts to build up in your mouth and then really, and it's like it's like every mouthful you've gone on a journey. So let's try and take this principle of Indian food into a schnitzel so that we can go on a journey. Now there's been a scientific <coughs> experiment that has come out that, that, that actually, again, Heston Blumenthal did, which is he tried to understand why it is that the Indians marinate their, their meat in yogurt. And he did an experiment just marinating in yogurt and spices and marinating in um, olive oil and spices and he showed that when you marinate with yogurt and spices because the proteins of the yogurt and the proteins in the meat end up binding a lot easier a lot quicker so you would be able to impart a lot more flavor into the food so because of that I actually once on the show poached chicken in coconut milk um, that I had seasoned the coconut milk in order to get like a really really creamy texture into the chicken Anybody can cook. Anyone can do anything, I really believe. Unless it's physically impossible for you to do it. If it's just based on mental capacity, I believe anybody can do it. So anybody can learn how to cook. You, you know, when there's a will, there's a way. be a good role model. I, I'm a religious Jew. I believe that we have to be a Kiddush Hashem, that we have to sanctify God's name. We have to try and help out as many people as we want and any opportunity that one has in life, one has to use that opportunity to do good with, in the world, to make a bit of money as well. But we have to be able to do, that, to do some good with it. I want to use it to try and help Mayor Punim raise funds, but I also want to use it to show people that even if you don't have a lot of money, you can still make the most magnificent food.